but this is not even technically a Kyle and Corin episode because we have some breaking news we're going to discuss. Uh, it is official. We are at war with Iran. Now, you know, I would say um, it's actually it was fair to say when we assassinated their top general that we're at war with them when we did that. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, it's uh, that's an act of war, obviously. But what I mean is tonight is the night that they officially responded to the United States and they just attacked a U.S. military base in Iraq. Um they launched at least 12 missiles. That's Jeez. And all this, we just learned this, so all this information is new and it's subject to change. Um, and, you know, all I have to say, man, because I've been covering this stuff inside and out, is, like, what did you expect would happen? Like, obviously, this was going to happen, something like this, when you attack their, you know, their top general. A yeah. guy had just finished defeating ISIS, and he was literally on a peace mission trying to ease tensions between Iran and Saudi Arabia when he was killed. So like, this is like, this is beyond super serious. And the fact that like, we are just out here bombing people and killing people, like there's bad people everywhere in the world. And for Trump to just select, you know, this guy in Iran and just put so many people in harm's way now having to go fight for, his dumbass actions when the guy didn't, you know, like, uh, uh, do we, do we know that he was plotting an attack and like, <laughs> hell no. They, that's what, see, that's what they say. They're like, Oh, he was plotting him in an attack. They presented no evidence of yeah. it. And this is the same intelligence community that lied us to war in 2003 when they said Saddam had weapons of mass destruction. And they also originally said that Saddam worked with Osama bin Laden to do 9-11. None of that was true. And yeah. they, every step of the way, they lied to us. Colin Powell famously went to the to the United Nations and held up a, a you know this vial. And he was like, see, Saddam Hussein is, you know, he's got uranium yellow cake. He's you know, he's creating a nuclear weapon. And it was all nonsense. It wasn't true. So, no, they, they say, like, oh, he's an imminent threat. And then when everybody's like, okay, well, what's your evidence of that? They're like, beep, 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 beep. Yeah. They have no evidence for it. Because, because Corin, and here's the dirty little secret that they don't want people to know, is that <laughs> ISIS and Al-Qaeda are terrorists. They're terrorists. The The ideology of this general, he's, you know, like, a, a Iran is a Shia nation, and... The Shia militias that are on the ground fighting, they're not they're not gonna attack the West. That's not their thing. Mm-hmm. ISIS and Al Qaeda do it because they're like jihadists. That's Sunni fundamentalism. The idea that there was like an imminent threat of a terror attack, a Shia inspired terror attack, that's not a thing. And what ISIS, that's not a thing. Mm-hmm. That doesn't exist. Like the, in fact, again, this general just got finished fighting ISIS and beating ISIS, literally. Like so to to all this, Corin, this guy was our ally like six and a half minutes ago. He was fighting ISIS with us, and now all of a sudden they acted like he had imminent, you know, he was going to imminently attack us. And then by the way, when they were when Mike Pompeo, the Secretary of State, was pushed on that a little bit, yeah, he he backed off it and he was like, they were actively plotting in the region. Come on, man! Like come like they act like we're dumb as shit. Like we haven't just been down this road, like. I, can, I don't even know the fucking quote, but that fool me once, fool me twice shit. But yeah, it's like, fool me once, shame on you, fool me twice. Um, shame on me? Yeah. Uh, fool me three times, go fuck yourself. Like, because you ain't fool me a third time. But this second time, old face lied to us back with the first war in Iraq. Corin, it, they're trying to tell us, Mike Pence tried to argue one of the reasons why we had to take this guy out, Soleimani, is because he says, like, Iran facilitated 9-11. It was Saudi Arabia. It was mm-hmm. 15 or 16 of the 19 hijackers were from Saudi Arabia. Yeah. But, like, now they have to spend time on this shit because Trump oh, just This becomes the priority game. number one, and it should be priority number one now because— Yeah, it has to be, but, like, it, it shouldn't be is what I'm saying. And yeah, that's priority why... number one is stopping it, and then, to your point, like, stop it and then spend that money here at home, the money yeah. that— obviously is going to be used abroad seven trillion dollars wasted in iraq two trillion dollars wasted in afghanistan nothing to show for it dead u.s soldiers hundreds of thousands of dead civilians in the middle east and listen man like i I want to give everybody the timeline of this so they like they get a, a better sense of how exactly we came to this point because i feel like 
the timeline of events is super important. So you get the full picture. And then also I want to give people a little bit of the, the history of the United States and Iran so they get an even better picture of what's going on. So again, what just happened is the Iranian, it, the Iranian government just attacked a U.S. military base in Iraq. They launched at least 12 missiles. I know that the Ayatollah is going to give a speech tonight probably where he does some chest thumping of his own. And maybe, I don't know whether he's going to, he'll probably say like maybe some more tit for tat stuff. Um, and like, oh, we could de-escalate or if you don't want to, hey, we can go in the other direction too. But like I said, the threat now is if the U.S. responds, which we're going to, then he says, well, then I, I'll target Riyadh, I'll ta target Israel. And so this is, this is spiraling out of control really quickly. And like, again, with Trump, I think the whole point is the neocons wanted it to spiral out of control because they want to do regime change in Iran, and they wanted to do it ever since 1979. So, okay, first let me give everybody the modern history, but let me give everybody the backstory. So, so a couple weeks ago, a U.S. contractor was allegedly killed in, in Iraq. Now, I say allegedly because zero information has been released about this person, and that's super abnormal for a situation like this. Usually if something like this happens, the name would be released right away, and we'd know. But they're saying a U.S. contractor was killed, and they've given no information. Now, in response to that, the Trump administration decided, we're going to go bomb Shia militias. Now, the Shia militias, again, were just our allies in defeating ISIS, Okay. Trump decided we're going to turn our weapons on them. I don't know why they blame the killing of a U.S. contractor on the Shia militias. Anytime there's a situation like that where a U.S. contractor gets killed, it's almost always ISIS or Al-Qaeda. Of course. Obviously. Obviously. Yep. Yep. So anyway, they turned the guns on the Shia militias. Trump dropped some bombs, killed at least a dozen, maybe two dozen members of these Shia militias. In response to that, a bunch of Shias started... Uh, Iraq, uh, Iraqi and Iranian stormed the U.S., probably more Iraqi than anything else, stormed the U.S. embassy in Iraq. Mm -hmm. And they basically said, hey, get the hell out of here because we saw what you just did. We don't like it. Leave. Now, listen, I don't, I don't think we should have ever been in Iraq in the first place, so I don't think we should be there. Mm -hmm. But especially now, they're coming in like, hey, get out of our country. Yeah, get out, get out, get out. But no. That is when Trump greenlighted the drone killing of the, the Iranian general. Now, why did he make that decision? That's a tough one to figure out. It's possible that, you know, just like Bill Clinton did, Bill Clinton bombed a pharmaceutical factory in Africa when he, when he was getting impeached, and it was like a distraction. Yep. Is it possible that Trump is trying to distract from impeachment? Yes. It's also possible that Trump saw on social media this guy, General Soleimani. He was, Soleimani had been trolling Trump on social media for months. And it's possible Trump saw some of that, and he might, he might have been like, oh, okay, so you're going to troll me? Well, how about I kill you? That's That'd possible. Now, crazy. I know, but these are the wild theories. Now, the, the more grounded theories are, you know, neocons have been whispering in his ear since day one because he packed his administration full of neocons. He's got Mike Pompeo in there, Gina Haspel. Obviously, John Bolton was in there. Um, and so he surrounded himself with these uber hawks and they've probably been telling him all along, like, oh, you should, you should, you should do this. You should take him out. You should take him out. You should take him out. Um, so whatever the reasoning was, he decided to assassinate a foreign general. And that's not, that's a thing where obviously they're going to respond. There's no doubt there's going to, they're going to respond. And my guess is even though Trump's a moron, the people around Trump knew that if he picked this, this road, that Iran was going to respond. Of so, course. Well, how, how can they not? You know, it's but, not like... But that, that's my point, is that, like, they knew we're provoking them to do something like they just did, which is bomb the U.S. military base, mm -hmm. and then now it's unleash the hounds of hell, and we're officially at war, and they're going to literally try to do the regime change that they've wanted since 1979. Now let me get into that history for everybody, because that's super important. In 1953, the United States overthrew the Iranian government. This is all on the record. This is all admitted to at this point. And there was a guy by the name of Mohammad Mossadegh who was elected in 1953 in Iran, and he was going to nationalize Iranian oil and just give the profits of the, of the Iranian oil to the Iranian people. That's when the U.S. and the U.K. said, not on our watch. So we overthrew him. We put in, into power this guy by the, uh, called the Shah, 
Oh. Re- Reza uh, pa- Pavlavi. Paz- I think I'm Pavlavi. I- I'm- I might be butchering that slightly. Um, anyway, so this guy um, was in power and he allowed the United States and the UK to keep getting super cheap oil. Uh, so we were back to business as usual there. And then in 1979, uh, he was ousted. Now, he was a dictator. He was ousted by an Islamic revolution. The reason why the revolution was Islamic in nature is because the mosques were the only places in the country where the Shah wasn't spying on people. So they gathered in the mosques, they overthrew them, and then Iran became a theocracy from then on. The Shia theocracy. Now, they're not a good government. I don't want anybody to get it twisted and think like, oh, you know, oh, they're, you know, it's a utopia over there and the U.S. is trying to ruin it. No, they're a terrible government. They do a lot of domestic repression. However, having said that, um, the United States, ever since 1979, has wanted to overthrow that government and make them a U.S. puppet state again. Why? Obvious reasons. Number one, cheap oil. That's mm-hmm. a huge part of it. Number two, a strategic advantage by having that country on our side. Right now, they're aligned more with Russia and China, and we don't like that. We'd like it a lot more if they were aligned with us. So there's a geostrategic reasons to do it. There's the oil reason. And then also, like always is the case for war, it's super profitable, man. A lot of people make a lot of money. It's the yep, military-industrial company. Yep. And these are the people who are in the room helping them make the decision. And these are the same people who are out there in the media saying, oh, no, we had to do this. We had to escalate with them. We had to do X, Y, and Z. And then come to find out, you know, this one's getting paid by Raytheon. This one's getting paid by Boeing. This one's getting paid by Honeywell. Yeah. They're all getting paid by defense contractors. So anyway, that's the background. That's the history of it. We know that since 1979, they've wanted to overthrow that government. General Wesley Clark from the U.S. is on the record saying that when he was, uh, you know, in power, they literally ha- like told him and had a list. Here are the countries that we want to overthrow in the next 10 years. And of course, on that list was Iran. Yeah. So now it's like they've finally gotten to that point, and it's a mess, man. How many people are going to die? You know, how much money is going to be wasted? And this is dangerous stuff too, because, like I said, they're aligned with China and Russia, and you're seeing the the split, the beginning of of a World War Three type scenario, mm-hmm. because you have the United States, Israel, and Saudi Arabia versus Iran, China, and Russia. You're seeing the dividing lines and they're crystal clear and i do not trust trump at all not even a little bit to be reasonable because like you said even though like this is what the neocons want but think about it man trump has the ability to launch nukes that guy has the ability to launch nukes he just said openly on twitter i will target your cultural sites i will bomb civilians he's already increased drone strikes 432 percent he's already increased troop levels in afghanistan and syria and this guy is the most impulsive dude ever you know if if somebody comes after him even 1%, he flips out and he he goes nuts on them on Twitter. So now we got a real world scenario where, you know, a US military base was attacked after he murdered a, a, an Iranian general and I don't believe that he'll do restraint at all. And Hell that's no. a terrifying scenario, man, because this thing is really spiraling out of control and we're like all these innocent people all around the world are the, are victims of these fucking arrogant blowhards who are in control. And it's terrifying, you know, and this is not like this is the point I'm trying to make to people is that, guys, this stuff is real. Like, I know for some people, maybe (laughs) go to Iraq and Afghanistan and, you know, maybe didn't have somebody in their family or a friend who went there to them. It's almost like the war is more of a conceptual thing because it's like, yeah, it happened. But I, I haven't seen it personally affect me in any way. Yeah. But no, all of this is real as a heart attack. And those are real people who are impacted by it and affected by it and have PTSD and people committing suicide. And, yeah. you know, in this case, this is a whole new can of worms that we're opening up. And it's because these micromanagers, these neocons in Washington, D.C., are obsessed with controlling the world, running the world, having, you know, U.S. puppet governments in place. It is about the oil. It is about the military industrial complex and the money. You know, I got a bridge to sell you. If you think the American, you know, these people in Washington, D.C. are actually concerned about the well-being of people yeah. in the Middle East and care about democracy and freedom. Sure. We they don't even care about us. Democratically elected us. leader. What's that? They don't even care about us. I uh, know. Exactly. We don't have clean water in Flint, Michigan. But, you know, you're telling me we got to go to freaking Kabul and Kandahar and Afghanistan. That's insane. 